few months ago, William Schneider Jr. arrived at the Caps Media Center with an absolute treasure trove of Ventura history. Bill's father, William Schneider Sr., was a highly respected teacher throughout Ventura. For years, his hobby was recording on camera interviews and family histories with fascinating people all over the county. Recently, his son, Bill Jr., gathered together more than 100 tapes from his father's archives and working here at the Caps Media Center has painstakingly restored these treasures. Bill's new series, called My Father's Stories, explores some of the very early days of Ventura County. Most of the videos were recorded 20 to 30 years ago. The people, places, and stories Bill shares are part of Ventura's rich history. Welcome to My Father's Stories. These stories are all over the place, which is wonderful. There's some agriculture, there's some oil, there's, some, there's, a, there's a lot of land stories, there's a lot of family stories, you've got religion stories. It is a total cross-section of Ventura, which is really terrific. So, uh, and who are we gonna hear about today? Today we're gonna hear about Riley Spencer. And I had never believed in water witches before until I saw this film. A water witch is a guy or a woman who will take a stick or a dividing rod and hold it like this, and he'll walk around and through his, for lack of a better word, telekinesis, can find water in the, in the, in the ground. It, it's amazing. I, I didn't believe it until my father went out and filmed this guy doing this. And he quite literally had a stick from a peach tree, and he walked back, and then he'd walk forward, and the stick would just, you could see the stick bending like that. And he'd walk back and stick would go back up and hit him in the face like that. And he goes right back where the water was, and the stick bent down, it, it broke the stick, because it was pulling so hard on the stick. And you have to see the film to believe this, because I never believed in water witches. <laughs> it's, it's like sorcery. I gotta see this. So, okay, so, so who is this? This is Riley Spencer, water witch. <laughs> Welcome, good people, to our segment of Tell It Like It Was from Moore Park. We're at Moore Park Union High School practice field. And we have one of the most unusual stories to tell today. We have with us the old gentleman, Riley Spencer, who for many, many years has witched water wells. And I'd like you to meet him right now. Riley Spencer. And Riley's, Riley's going to demonstrate just how this is done. He has, he literally has a coat hanger and a handle. And he has a microphone and he's going to tell just the action that that wire is taking as we walk through this yard. You ready, Riley? Fine and dandy. Here we go. Well, here he's going towards the water now, pulling over towards the water. When he gets over there, it will stop, start going down. Now it's going down to the water. When he gets down to where the water is, now it's going over to it. Now, now it's going down to the water. Then and when he gets down there, he goes back and forth. There's the first stream right there. That's your first stratum. And when that that's, that's a little, little over 100 feet. And it goes about 160. Now it'll go down to about 160 feet. Now it's dipping again, and you count those. Is it's that going right? down. So it hits the water, when it hits the water, it'll go back and forth like that again. Yeah. That's another strata. Yeah, that's the second strata. Now it'll go up and down and go down to the third strata. That's about 350 feet. You get little ones. See the little ones in there? See what it's doing when it hits them little ones? Now it'll go down to the big one and then go real strong back and forth. 
Now this is about 350 feet, see it? Yeah. That goes about 350 to pretty near 400, right there. That's all water right there. That's where, that's... And then, then it'll, it'll go down, down to about four, a little better than 400, and now there's another stream right there at about 450, 460. That's a good one right there. Now that's it, that's, it stopped. We drilled a well, that, that well is 515 feet deep. And this is the way you located it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you have any help doing this? Well, uh, what we done, we lined up, we lined up the wife and my brother-in-law and sister-in-law to Jim Hitch's well down there. Okay. It's a stream goes right down through there to uh, Jim Hitch's, Levy drilled that well. Yeah. So to make it sure, before we put our money in this hole, well, we lined them up down there to line up with uh, Jim's well to make sure. See, it's a stream comes down through here, and one coming this way, and one going straight on down there to Jim's house. Well, uh, did you have anybody check you out, like? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. We, uh, what you, uh, uh, I can't think of the guy's name that checked me out. Adair? Uh, Bob Adair. Bob Adair. Yeah. Adair. Barbara Adair checked me out. Yeah. I checked him out all the time, and she checked me out. Yeah, they checked you out. Same way with this one down here. And this is, you put some money into this well. That's and, right. And you base it on what you've done here to, and showed us how to do today. That's right. Have That's you right. ever have you ever done this with anything else other than the wire? Have you ever done it with, well, I, well, I read, uh, a willow, a willow will work fine and dandy, and I got a peach limb there that works awful good, too. Okay, well, let's try that. Here, hang right there. Mm -hmm. That big one. Mm -hmm. Here's a big, healthy peach limb. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to try to walk through the same thing again. Yeah. And I'll watch your wires there for you. Mm -hmm. Attaboy. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us what it does. Well, when you get close to the water, it'll it'll go straight down. See? See that? It'll just go down there. Then when you walk away from it, it'll come back. See that? And it'll hit you. Yeah. It'll see hit you if I mean? you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. See? Then when you go towards the water, it'll just keep going right on down, just like that. See, not, look at that. See that? Uh, you, it's broken. Yeah, it breaks right off. It's there, broken see? right off. Yeah. And how's your hands? Well, you see, it, it hurts your hand on there, see? See? It, right. This seems a rougher way of doing it. You can't locate the straight as, as easily. No, the wire is so much better because the wire will tell you. It goes up and down till it comes to the water, and then it goes back and forth. Yeah, tells you where it is. Sure. Riley, this is quite an art, quite a skill. Can you tell us when you first discovered that you could do this? Well, it was about, I'd say, 60 years ago. My father-in-law and I was up here on the Fairview, and Mr. Carmichael was uh, drilling a water well up there. And he got a big boot out of it because an oil worker, I was working in the oil fields then, and the oil worker was putting down the well, and that country is supposed to be dry. And they got a little Englishman from Ojai to come down and find the well for him. And he told me he was there when they was trying to find the well, Mr. Cornett. So it was a piece of wire laying there, and he said, that's what he used. So I picked it up, and it worked just wonderful with me. He spent a fortune on water wells, or my wife's father. So he was interested in water. And so uh, I think that's the first time. Then after that, I got to try it just for Bob Adair to come along and want me to test the well someplace with him. Check one And out. I'd go help him, you know. Do you have any idea, now that was 60 years ago, do you have any idea how many wells you've helped to locate in those 60 well, years? Oh, it's been terrific. I don't know, you know what I mean? Uh, just you go out with different friends and different fellas, and Bob Adair would come and get me and want me to go check him. Now you said... Uh, would it be, say, 100 or? or close to it, I imagine. Probably around yeah, 100 yeah, wells. I say so, yes. Yeah. And I suppose this has made you a very wealthy man, locating water wells. Hadn't made a dime. Hadn't made, made a dime. dime. <laughs> you, I noticed all the way through this, you said that you would uh, no, do I was, this for No, I, I was just tickled to death to do it. Yeah. I did it from my brother. I got one from my brother up in Oregon, and I got one from my uh, uh, oldest uh, sister's boy up in uh, Fresno. Fresno. Got a small well for him out there. And you, uh, incidentally, Riley, you were born, I believe you said, in Fillmore, weren't you? No, I was born in Texas. Texas? I came to Fillmore, 1906. That's a spell. Uh-huh. That's a long spell. Mm -hmm. well, so I was 80 years old, the 7th of July. I'm going to call you a native Ventura County, okay? Well, the wife is. The wife is born right yeah, here out here in Oxnard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, when you started out, 
to locate a well, how would you do this? You'd walk out and somebody say, hey, Riley, I need a well. How would you do that? Well, most of them will always come and get you to check somebody. But what I do, uh, uh, up at Paso Robles, I found up there, the old boy had a big Cadillac, and you'd hold a wire out the front window like that, and then when you'd come to it, it would start pulling and working. Yeah. But the heck of it is, when then when you get out, and you'd have to walk four or five miles all around trying to locate the place for him. Did, did, yeah. you, did you ever do this on a horseback? No, no. Cars are bad enough for me in pickup. <laughs> I do it in pickup, you know. Yeah. I can see a Cadillac roaming the hills of Paso Robles. Yes, yeah, sir. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's just let's do this once more. And I, let's say you wanted to drill a well down here. How would you how would you locate this well? You came over and you demonstrated a stream that came in there. Are you acquainted with any other streams? Well, down this there? stream comes right straight down through here. Is one of them, and then the other one goes it goes right straight through here. Can you can you right find here. this stream right here for us? Yeah, right here. This one here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if you can hold your one. Yeah. Come right there and aim for those two young men over there. Well, well, it, it goes towards the water. See, it's going towards the water it, now. It's pointing towards the water. Yeah, and it comes to it and it goes up and down like that. Now, it's bobbing if you're counting those bobs. Yeah, it's supposed to be about right around 100 feet to the first strata. That is the first one. And it goes on down to there the second one. That's the second one. Yeah. Now it'll stop and go on down to the third one. That's around 360 feet. Yeah. Now this is the third one. This is the best stream right here. That's where we get most of the water, right there. That goes about a little over 400 feet right there. Then it goes to about 450 feet, you hit another one. Right there is another one. That's the last one right there. We went, we went to 515 feet with that well there. Yeah, that's, that's remarkable. Mm -hmm. our, our audience probably should understand that we are standing at a site, a well site that uh, Mr. Spencer did locate. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is fascinating, I think. Well, it makes a lot of difference when you put your own money in a well. You want to be pretty, I know, pretty sure you're going to get it. And wh how much would uh, that cost you uh, in those days when you put that in there per foot? Do you remember? No, I don't. Dingler drilled it for us, and I don't remember how much it cost. I think it cost around. 15, 16,000 or something like that for the whole thing, I'm not sure. That's putting a lot of faith in it this time, mm -hmm. just a simple clothes hanger. Mm -hmm. Right. Incidentally, in our audience over here we have today, we have your great granddaughter. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we have your wife and mm -hmm. your grandson and his and my wife. my son. Yeah. And there's your son, the yeah. whole family, the whole, the whole generation. Yeah, I, I haven't met him before. Yeah, that's a. Uh, was old and there's his his boy and he has his son and, here yeah this one and, and steve and john riley there's another thing that i'd like to try if you don't mind some folks have told me that they didn't have this skill but that they could hold the willow and have the water witch is in this case would be you hold their hands and it would work you want to try that well, what do you mean? I don't well, let, let me hang on to this now, and then, <laughs> and we'll walk over there towards the water, let it direct us, mm -hmm. and then you touch my hands and see if it, if it doesn't work, you touch my hands and see if you can make it work, okay? Well, will you hold it? Yeah, I'll hold it, All okay? Right. All right. Here we go. Now you walk over here to it. Does it? This is the right, right way? Yeah, hold like it as tight as you can, yeah. All right. But hold it right on the end. Right, right down on the end. That. If you don't, it'll pull, it'll hurt your hand. All right. Now, right in, oh, a little further. Now, you want me to hold your hand? Yeah, not, nothing's working, Riley. Huh? Nothing's working right now. No, nothing you try works. me. Uh -huh. I don't think you're squeezing tight enough. No, no. No, it don't seem to work there, does it? Let's see what it'll do with me now. All right, you see what you do. Story of my life. See, 
See, it'll come back like that. We're standing over it. Yeah, see, now, now you go towards it, see. Now you're going to where we was, what we was, we was too far. Now, see it coming down? Yeah. It's coming down right here, see yeah. it? Yeah. It's coming down more and more. See it come on yeah. down? You get over here right where the water is. See that? Wow. That'll that come right down there. See that what it'll do to your hand? That does. Yeah, see? That does. See what I mean? But uh, see, I twist that right off that way. You take a willow limb and a long willow limb, well, you can twist them right off every time if you try to hold it. You know what I mean? If you don't try to hold it, well, it, you know what I mean? If you don't hold it tight, it won't go. But if you hold it like that, just hold get it a, tight. It's a real see, it, it. That yeah. goes there, see? See that start down? Now you go away from it, and that thing will come right back. See, like that. And then you go Fantastic. to the, where you go to the water. And, uh, but that's why I don't think too much of this, because they don't go back and forth and tell you where the water it is. It doesn't locate it, right. See? Right. A lot of them use that just to know the water's there, but this will tell you how deep the water is. I've just had a marvelous idea, Riley. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could set up a school and teach people how to be water witches. <laughs> we could make a fortune, don't you think? Uh, I don't know. It's pretty hard work. I don't know if you run around over these hills and, and look. You know, <laughs> nowadays, I don't think you get a, a young guy to do it. A lot of them do it, though. It's a lot yeah. of people do it. I think. Well, a man told me about hiring a geologist at, you know, $100 an hour or something yeah, like that. Yeah, a lot of them do that. Yeah, but a lot of here, them. you know, you could do this sort of thing for your friends. It costs, well, it costs so much money now to drill these deep holes. These farmers get the most, a lot of them get these geologists and they find, like down here, my boy's father-in-law, Jess, he was telling me about a well there, wanted me to, I think he didn't think I knew much about it or it didn't work good. He wanted me to check a well down there at Somas, thousand feet deep. Well, you got to walk way up in the hills and you uh, uh, count a thousand times that wire going up and down. And he got down to a thousand feet, the damn wire just went crazy. Just wild. Then yeah. he, he, he was satisfied then, but he just wanted to see if it worked with me. I, I told him all I know, the damn thing works so good. And you really? Worked and you at really, a thousand feet. Now you don't imagine how you have to count one, two, three, four, five, until you get to a thousand. Yeah. Then see your wire go back and forth. And they got a wonderful well there, and the geologist told them it'd be enough to last 40 years. Yeah. Right out of Soma, sir. One of them big ranchers. See, they get those guys, and they go down to that, what they call the cesspit. You get yeah. that around from 800 to 1,000 feet. You get it out of the cesspit. That's a wonder, That's a good water sand. But most of them in here like this are shallow well, five or 600, you know, on down around Oxnard and all over, see. But the good wells are getting now, like here on the Faribault, they're getting them around eight, 900,000 feet. But they cost a fortune nowadays. And the gravel pack them, too, now. They used to didn't do that, see. Mr. Cornett, he spent a fortune on, he had 150 acres here, and I don't know how many wells he drilled, and the sand would come in on them a lot, you know, and sand up on sand them. Up he, he spent a fortune, that's why he was interested in it. Then they got, so they gravel packed, they gravel packed this one, see. That sand is like powder. I remember uh, working over here 25 years ago, and that's a very fine sand, it's like, like mm -hmm. powder flour. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it hit on him on 104, they called it up there. He drilled a well there years and years ago, and that's what it did there. They, they wanted to pump too much water at one time. They put too bigger pump in, and it would suck the sand down. Yeah. Then they finally got started. Say that they could pump 50 inches. The best way to do is pump 25 inches. Then you don't pull in so much sand. See, they finally, but most of them guys like him, he had 150 acres of walnuts to irrigate. And he wanted 50, 75, 100 inches of water, bless his heart. Yeah. So he'd go to drill the well and open big, put a big pump on there and open it up. And then it sucked the sand in on him, cut his bowls all out, and everything was on the pump. It cost him a fortune, bless his heart. It's good visiting with you, Riley. And I enjoy these stories about the old times. And uh, Moore Park has changed, hasn't it? Terrific, you're unbelievable, talk, unbelievable. You're talking about walnut orchards that have long disappeared, mm -hmm. and that is the way I remember Moore Park with all these walnut orchards, and uh, they're Well, the apricots, they used to have world apricots here, too, and walnuts. Her dad put 150 acres right straight there on that Moore Park of walnuts. And some years it'd freeze, and uh, you know, other one, the east wind, and yeah. sun would burn them up, and everything else. It, it was rough, didn't it? Although he'd done awful good. And I think I've seen two apricot ranches left. Is that right? There's, There's one, one over here on Peach Hill. Yeah. Yeah, the boy's cousin, uh, Junior Bowers, he's, he's got that lease down now over there. And you come and pick them. You pick. Yeah. You yeah pick he's done them. awful good there. He's done awful good on yeah. 
They come out of Los Angeles and all over and pick them. Of course, he says they eat an awful lot while they're picking them, too. <laughs> if I remember about apricots, they only did that once. Uh, eat a lot of apricots. Yeah. <clears throat> well, sir, what's, what are your plans for the future, Ali? Well, me, I know I'm, you're a, I'm just exactly where I want to be. I know you're a hard-working man. No. You're hard to get a hold of. No, I'm just exactly where I want to be. The wife and I are retired now. And I just, I'm just exactly right. Now, you're using that word retire pretty loosely, as I know oh, you. Oh, well, yeah, we, you've got to keep busy. How many know? hours a day do you work? Not very many, no. I'll tell you for sure. Well, you're on the go. Oh, yeah, you've got to, you've got to keep busy. Uh, what I want to do, I want to get my strength back. It's so good so I can play some golf. See, lately I've been playing golf. I want to get so I can play golf more. What do you shoot? Well, let's just forget about what do you shoot. <laughs> 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 I, just don't, I don't shoot very good golf. I'll tell you that. We go and have a lot of fun. I play yeah. with Henry and uh, Charlie Bowers. Yeah. And one of them can't see, and the other one can't hear very good. So I got the little advantage of the you, boys. You yeah. have a little. Is that the same Charlie Bowers used to be on the corner over there in the Walnut oh, Orchard? Uh, Charlie Geisler, I mean. Charlie Geisler. Yeah, oh, Charlie yeah. Geisler. Charlie and Ellen Henry and I, I used to play a lot. We have a lot of fun together. Charlie, he keeps score and. Uh, is he trustworthy? He does all that. No, he isn't. He, he isn't. doesn't. <laughs> no. Okay. No, we have a lot of fun together. Okay. I think we'll break here for a while. We're getting off our subject. Yeah. But I think it's more fun than a barrel of monkeys mm -hmm. to visit with these old timers and their stories. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll be back. All right. The house that you folks are looking at now. It's the first house that the Spencers built here in Moorpark. And I think it's extremely important now that we meet Mrs. Riley Spencer Sr., who I'd like to introduce as the treasure of this clan. Mrs. Spencer? How are you? Fine, thank you. How long have you been married to this fellow? 57 years, 58 come March. Has he been easy to handle? Very good, wonderful. He's a pretty good old guy, isn't he? Huh? I think the best. <laughs> That's great. Thank you very much. You know, in all these years that these folks have lived around here in Moor Park, they've seen a lot of changes. But there's one thing we haven't seen change, and that's Riley's ability to locate water. We've been watching this tape of Riley Spencer from Moorpark. And in the studio with us today is an old friend of mine, Jack Tobias. Jack, we're sure glad to have you here. Thank you, Bill. It's good to be here. What did you think about our tape? Oh, that's very, very interesting. Uh, as a youngster, I witnessed one, one uh, use of the, of the uh, peach tree, uh, peach limb, I should say. and. Uh, I don't believe, Bill, that I was old enough at the time to realize the significance, except that it made a great impression upon me. Well, isn't that something? And you know, did you hear in this videotape, did you hear that branch snap? Very definitely. Well, we have the branch here, and you can, it was about that long, they were even, and you heard that snap. We'd like to play that back so our audience can see what we're talking about. Attaboy. You're fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell us what it does. Well, when you get close to the water, it'll it'll go straight down. See? See that? It'll just go down there. Then when you walk away from it, it'll come back. See that? And it'll hit you. Yeah. It'll see hit you if I mean? you're not careful. Yeah. yeah. See? Then when you go towards the water, it'll just keep going right on down, just like that. See? Not... Look at that. See that? Uh, you, it's broken. Yeah, it breaks right off. It's there, broken see? right off. Yeah. And that's what broke off, right there. It's the remnant that's left. Fascinating. Now, this is the wire that he was using. That's that old coat hanger that he's got wrapped up. It wasn't too good a picture, but it was, that's quite a knack. Have you ever done that, Jack? No, I've tried. I've attempted it, but I've never been successful, Bill. 
Well, I'll tell you a secret about Riley. He didn't, he didn't know whether this peach branch would work. So what he does is he gets a bucket of water and sets it out on the ground and then holds the peach branch out there and sees if it's going to work for him. Runs a test. He tests it before he goes out in the field. Good. But, there, you know, there's a segment in there that he's talking about looking for water on a ranch up in uh, San Luis Obispo, I think, or Paso Robles. And he's out driving the hills in a big white Cadillac, and he's leaning out the window. Can you picture that? <laughs> well, that would be something for the books. That certainly would be interesting. Jack, water has made, as you know, as well as I, that water has made the Santa Clara Valley. And we're looking now at a couple of pictures of an early water well drilling rig. When I say early, Jack, this is around 1900, possibly even a little before 1900. And there's been some changes in drilling outfits for water. What can you see in that first one? In that first one, you can see that the casing had to be driven by the cable tool itself. It was a cable, cable drilling rig, which just hammered its way with a bit into the soil and down into the water strata. And actually, they just punched a hole in the soil, isn't that right? Punched a hole in the soil and then punched the casing down around the outer edge of that hole. Now, this casing is a metal pipe approximately 12 inches across. And what did it do, Jack? What was its... Well, its purpose was to hold the upper layers away from the, from the well, the pump, rather, that would go into the hole. And uh, then at the lower level, after the casing was driven, it would be perforated to allow the water to come into the casing. Now, here's a close-up of that same rig, Jack. What do you see on this one that should be pointed out? Well, here you see the what we call the draw works, or the machine the machinery that actually drove the cable tool. That actually we used, we used to call it a walker arm, Bill, that mm -hmm. that provided a cam action on that cable, lifting and dropping that tool is the way they perforated the ground and into the water bearing strata. And those, uh, of course, progressed from this, as we see here in the picture, to more sophisticated types of draw works and walking beams that uh, got more efficient as time went by. Jack, I know you've watched uh, these old drillers and they had the touch, didn't they? Well, they Special touch. They certainly did, Bill. I, do you have any experiences with that? Yes, I recall when we drilled the well on our home ranch uh, in the 50s that uh, the cable, uh, the operator rather, kept his hand on the cable almost yeah. all the time. And by feeling that cable, which could, could be working at two or 300 feet in the, into the ground, he could tell the type of texture of the soil he was in and or rock or clay. And uh, I recall very vividly as we came into the area near the water strata, uh, and I could actually hear the sound at the cab cable. Uh, he said, we're, we're working on an area that's similar to, the drum, to a drum head. And uh, you could actually hear that, that thud of this solid rock that covered the, the water strata. Probably clay? Clay. clay. Yeah, well, it was uh, very hard clay. Yeah what they call cemented, yeah. cemented sand in a sense. And then when that broke through? When that broke through, it actually backed the cable tool up into the hole that is forcing boulders into the hole, and it backed the tube up, tube up some 30 feet. Jack, it's been good to have you with us. Thank, Thank you, Bill. Thank you very much. So, ends another segment of Like It Was. And those are the days and we try to bring a touch of nostalgia into your lives again. Thank you.